Gaza live! Let Gaza live! We have to change the narrative. We may not have as much money as APAC, but we have more people and we have more yeah. truth. Yeah. Yeah. We have love on our side. Well, I, I wish that I had a million plus, which is what Jeffries has received, and Torres also to try to have a conversation but they clearly don't want to have a dialogue, which to me makes it seem as if they're afraid to know the truth of what's actually going on. And I guess their APAC donors make that very difficult should they start to listen to what actually the rest of the world, the rest of the United States, the bulk of the United States wants a ceasefire. There's never been a peace that's been attained through violence. We have to have a permanent ceasefire and save the lives of all those people that are now basically in a corner, just being shot at like fish in a barrel. And very, as we know and was seen during the um, South African testimony, pages and pages and pages that clearly say this is a genocide. There are a lot of Americans that, you know, don't understand why we're able to find billions of dollars for war, billions of dollars to a country that has health care, that has uh, subsidized housing, that has free education, when we are told in this country it's impossible. So I think that's another element of people that um, need to be listened to. Um, so I'm very happy to to be here, to be able to stand with these women, who some of whom had so much personal loss. Uh, and as a mom, I just can't bear any longer to see this kind of devastation with so many of the victims are children and women. I don't understand how people can turn a blind eye to that. I just don't understand it. Well, I'm really happy if the spell doesn't go through. I gotta say, because we have these issues, and I'm um, for a ceasefire so we can try to accomplish something that hasn't been able to be accomplished by fighting. And the lives on both sides are precious and we're getting more and more Americans involved as that region starts to explode. And so we really feel strongly that not only the lives of one point some million people who are stuck and can't go anywhere and are sy systematically being killed or starved, also as the whole area kind of implodes, we're fearful for what it means and the escalation of danger to our citizens and feel very strongly that our tax dollars, while we don't have health care or housing and Israel has subsidized housing, free education and health care, that we would like to see some of that where we are. Things that we like to speak to the speaker about. I think, you know, this is a little world right here, the way right. that this works. Yeah. and his concerns with keeping his job and his finances coming in, whatever. But you have to peek out and see that outside of this bubble, most of the world understands that there's a genocide happening. Eighty-some percent of Americans want to cease fire. It took a while for everybody to understand that the anti-Iraq people were actually on the right side. You know, giving my tax dollars to provide the ammunition for the war, not enough to say you're concerned if you keep giving this Williams. to people, then right. it's going to keep happening. If your intention is to put a theme park in Gaza, then I guess you're going along the right route. But if your intention is to actually try to make that area safer for everyone, then you need to have some kind of discourse that's not happening at the same time that you're killing 10,000 children. Do you tell the, the group the things that have happened to you because no, you're so no, no, I'm okay. I got fired uh, from my agency of 10 years and I've been getting threats and things like that. And I got, I, I lost uh, work, but you know, at the end of the day, that's not as important as humanity. people sign. So, uh, will you, at will least you, I like, have a heart. my self respect. Yes. Yeah. 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 And in Hollywood, I mean, is are there people who understand what's going on in Gaza and care about it? Yes, but that doesn't mean that they're able to deal with the pressure. Right now it's award season, so that makes it even more difficult. Oh. One of the agencies gave $5 million to, who? Is tell, to uh, Israel. My um, shame, shame. agency is telling other people not to even look at certain sites, not to tweet, or they will end up like me, so they're oh using God. me as kind of an example. Um, so I'm just fine.
So they can use me as an example. I'm happy to be on the list with all the other people that are being yeah. used as an example yeah. and with you. Um, so right now, it's it, especially if you live in California, it's asking a lot people. It's a lockdown on on opinions and even uh, you can't even discuss it we're on the right track that yeah. makes me hopeful and yes. i know that eventually you won't grow up being the world the way that's you know some of the kids have been less fortunate to be inundated with a narrative that's wrong yeah and dehumanizes palestinians what did rashida and corey say they just said welcome and good to see you and uh i said they're my heroes and what can i do and uh you know, one thing besides getting a good seat in a restaurant, I could take the Instagram feeds and the tweets and whatever and put them out. I mean, I'm being shadow banned now, so it's being a little more difficult to get something up. So that's my job is just to bear witness and to try to get information that people aren't getting from mainstream media to put it out. I wish that a lot of the other people that have lost their jobs knew how many people have so they didn't feel so isolated because that is one of the things that's really terrible is that you feel really isolated people that were your friends find it risky to hang out with you and the disappointment that they that you have about their not helping uh makes makes it difficult also so i wish there was some way to show how many thousands of people have fired from all different kinds of positions yeah there's no place to even put the list because the new york times fire people because there's no publications there's nowhere except you know a lot of the people that need to be reached are not online that's why the kids are so far ahead because they're getting real information but a lot of older people are just glued to cnn msnbc and the new york times and they don't see when the new york times has to correct some a story they don't see that part they're still back on you know, all the beheaded baby story. Back they we yeah. have the president repeating lies and never changing. You know. We went to offices of representatives that we love, like Rashida Tlaib and Cori Bush. We met with Jim McGovern, Betty McCollin, all who've called for a ceasefire. But then we also met with others who have not called for a ceasefire, whether it's the office of the Speaker of the House, Mike Johnson, or it's Chris Smith, somebody who's called for the destruction of UNRWA, uh, or it's very big APAC recipients like Richie Torres from the Bronx. So we've had a variety of encounters with Congress people, with staff people, and I would say it's so important to be in the halls of Congress, to keep calling Congress, and to let them know that we represent the majority voice in the United States that is saying, don't you dare give another penny of our money to Israel, ceasefire now, and fund the humanitarian organization UNRWA. We've filled the halls of Congress. We have probably spoken to a hundred members of Congress. We've made them uncomfortable. We've made them think about things that they don't have to think about without us pushing. And so I hope you will continue to join us in the halls of Congress. They're breaking down. Their lies are falling apart. Join us. Cease fire now. Cease fire now. Cease fire. Fire.